Hi everyone, I'm Norby Babos, the technical manager at SolarKit. Today, we'll be introducing the Sun 5000, an asymmetrical inverter from the Mapsio series, and I'll show you how to set it up and get it running smoothly. If you'd like to see more videos from us, just click the little bell icon at the bottom of this video, and you'll get notifications whenever we post something new. Behind me, you'll also see our smart guard installed. It comes with a small key to unlock the side. Keep this key safe, because you won't be able to open it without it. First up, once we've assembled our equipment, we need to switch everything on from the AC and DC sides. Following this, we proceed to log into the Fusion Solar app to begin the setup process. Once inside the app, select the services section and then the commission device. At this point, we'll scan the QR code for the system. In this case, we're working with the Sun 5000 model, specifically an 8 kilowatt MAP0 inverter. This inverter is asymmetrical, featuring advanced smart functionality to enhance system performance. This model offers enhanced intelligence and added security features compared to the Sun 2000. One significant difference is that each panel requires an optimizer, as the system cannot function without them. Just behind me, you'll see our three-phase smart guard, which enables the backup function for the entire house. We'll delve into the wiring setup in a separate video. The whole house is connected to the backup side, and next to me is the S114 kW Howard's Luna, which is the battery. We've also got the solar panels up on the roof and our Merc 600 optimizers installed. This here is the battery itself, and up on the roof we have both the solar panels and our Merc 600 optimizers working together as part of the system. In this setup, each time it's essential to connect to our communication unit, which would typically be the dongle located here as the main connection point. However, in this instance, since our smart guard is equipped with a built-in Emma unit, we're connecting directly to Emma. This process requires us to scan the QR code on the side of the smart guard device, so I'll make my way over and scan it now to complete the connection. Once we scan the QR code on the smart guard, we'll need to enter an installer login password. We'll type that into the app. Now we're logged into Emma, here we can control the system. After logging in, we're brought to the setup interface where we'll complete the commissioning steps. We set our time zone and for the grid code, the app asks which country we're in. For Hungary, we'll select it from the list. Here, we would usually be able to select a router for connecting the system. However, in this current setup, since we haven't fully configured the system yet and there's no electricity in the house, we also don't have a Wi-Fi signal available. We'll handle this part later. At this point, the system will recognize any connected devices. By selecting manual search, it prompts a thorough scan of all connected devices, ensuring that each piece of equipment on the network is accurately detected for setup. We've located our devices, including the smart guard and inverter. It shows that we have 14 kilowatt hours of energy storage and 16 optimizers. Next, we'll proceed to set the grid code for the connected devices by choosing the correct code that corresponds to our specific location. This step is essential for enabling the inverter to start functioning properly within the local regulations and requirements. I just heard a click behind me. In the parameter configuration section, we have the ability to fully set up and make any necessary adjustments to the system since the meter installation type is built in Emma. As it's a three-phase four-wire system, we don't need extra setup here. We can also configure the ampere values at the main feed point. Here we'll set it to 3 E25 amps as this reflects our current usage requirements and ensures the system is appropriately adjusted. On the smart guard, we have the ability to enable seamless switching, allowing the system to transition to island mode in just 10 to 20 milliseconds. This quick response ensures a smooth switch without interruptions. That's essentially it for configuring the main settings of the system. Now, we'll need to wait briefly for the system to complete its boot up process and start running smoothly. Once it finishes recognizing all connected devices, power will be restored and the system can begin generating energy. Additionally, if the system includes zero export protection, we have the option to configure specific parameters, allowing us to fine tune the system's performance and ensure safe, efficient operation. To establish a connection to the local Wi-Fi network, we'll begin by joining the network. 
Once logged into Emma, we'll navigate to the Set menu where we can access communication settings. Within this menu, we'll select Router Configuration to complete the setup, enabling the system to connect to the Wi-Fi and operate with all network-based functions. If connected to a VLAN, select your Wi-Fi network name. For privacy and security, this part of the process won't be visible due to data protection. Choose the local Wi-Fi network for this site. Our connection was successful. Next, in the management system settings, we'll connect again to ensure a stable connection to the Fusion Solar server. Connecting to the local Wi-Fi alone is not sufficient. We also need to link the device to the Fusion Solar management system. By adding this additional step and selecting one more option, we'll connect it to the management system, ensuring the device is fully integrated and able to communicate with the network. The connection was successfully established, completing the setup. Our system is now operational and fully connected to the Fusion Solar platform, so we're ready to start configuring it. In most existing installations, the system has been previously set up with zero feed-in limitations. These limitations are intended to control the amount of energy flowing back into the grid, ensuring that the system runs efficiently and stays in line with local regulations. With our connection to both the network and Wi-Fi successfully established, we can now proceed to set up the location for the device. In addition, we'll be able to create a user profile for the Wi-Fi user, which will allow them to monitor and manage the system remotely through the app. I'd like to point out in this video that we were quite fortunate in our setup because most of the devices already had the latest firmware, so we didn't need to perform any updates. However, in about 99% of cases, both the battery and the inverter will require a firmware update there's nothing extra you'll need to worry about. As soon as you log into the app, it will display a notification if the firmware version is outdated, prompting you to start the update. Simply press the update button, wait for it to complete, and then log back into the device afterward. If the inverter also requires an update, you'll receive a similar notification, guiding you through the process with ease. This is essentially the initial setup step required for every installation. Once that's done, you can proceed with the commissioning, so don't worry if you get a prompt like that, that's just part of the installation. In an upcoming video, we'll dive into more advanced settings, including how to configure the zero export feature to prevent export into the grid, and how to enable SmartGuard's backup functionalities for added security. Don't forget to check out that video as well for all the important details. So if you've completed the installation and want more details on configuring Zero Export and SmartGuard, you can find that in this video. For additional details about the products themselves, be sure to watch this video. And if you'd like to revisit any of our other videos, you can easily find them all right here. Buenos Aires. The broccoli soup is over here and the pork stew is over here. That little bell icon is where you can find the stuff.